So, um, again, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Baratang Mia. I am from Girl Hype, Women Who Code. And we're organizing Women in IGF for the second year now. We had one in Addis. And following that up, it's this particular one. So I will start the session. We have three speakers, one presentation about what's happening with women in the ecosystem. And then we'll have Mr. Maktasek to tell us about what has he done in the past year, about what we aimed for. Last year, the focus was on uh, contributing towards the global digital compact. And we've done that very well. So I will touch on that, but in the interim, I just want to say that the reason we hold women in IGF is that even though women are a huge part of the IGF community and make up half of the population globally, women's voices have been historically low and entirely absent in the political and digital space. Spaces. So these imbalances ultimately deny leadership opportunities to women in spaces, especially in the spaces that they would have to impact the technology, build it and create it in their local environments, especially women who face additional forms of discrimination. So IGF's Women's Sub Summit focus on leadership mindset and spotlight the women who can harness the power in this pivotal moment on the internet and to shape the digital platform. We want to contribute a new way forward and come up with actionable solutions to drive meaningful progress in internet governance. So the final output of this particular sum summit would be a resource produced by a community of participants at the summit um, one of the things is making sure that the planning for next year, which we want to take this and hopefully turn it into an NRI where women's issues and gender issues could be discussed in a formal setting. At the moment, it's been driven by one organization and few of us that were there last year. But I think now we want to make it bigger and try to approach the internet governance secretariat and say, please give us an opportunity to become an NRI at global level that women across the world, across the globe, can um, contribute towards the IGF and contribute at the leadership level and make sure that the impact of what women and gender issues should be covered at that level. So based on that, Whatever we come up with, uh, Margaret would do a presentation and what the presentation she, she will do, will publish it as part of the final outcome of this and take some of the points on what do we do with what came up out, out of that presentation. So it's more of an open forum. Um, everyone who's here is allowed to contribute to how can we make gender be taken as an entity that could contribute towards IGF, because at the moment there isn't one entity that is really focusing on gender issues, and we take Women's Summit as part of that. And with that in mind, I will give an opportunity to Mr. Maktasek, who will talk to us. Uh, but I just want to say that gender disparity is very huge. Um, in Africa, I know that women are, are working very hard. I'm looking at Lily here who's driving so much about internet governance from the basic and on the ground. But at the same time, because of the literacy level and because of the misunderstanding of where AI is going and what technology is bringing to the communities, the uptake is very slow. The people are still not understanding what is technology doing for them and why is it beneficial? And if you come and you talk about the rights and digital rights and human rights of people in the technology space to people who do not have technology, it's as if you are taking away something from them. So it's, it, we have to find the balance of making sure that even if 
we're talking about the rights of women online and we talk about cyber security and we talk about gender and we talk about all these issues that comes up at IGF. We also have to talk about how do we make sure that the same people that we're talking about on the ground have access to internet because at the moment I think it's only 15% of Africans who have proper internet access. That means when we talk about the rights that we're talking about at IGF, 85% of Africans don't know what the hell we're talking about because it's not implemented yet. So how do we talk about something they don't have? So that balance is something that I think we would have to address, especially women, because they are the ones who are literally not online. And with that said, I'll hand over to Mr. Makta. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Baratang, and good to m good morning, everyone. To to attend this uh, important event to discuss uh, women in IGF. As you know, women uh, is playing an important role in the Africa ecosystem, but we have a lot of concern about their participation. When we look at the African culture, the woman, women are the one who educated children. They are wake up early, very early, to go to try to get some thing done, some work to give food to their kids. Women also leave their countries, a rural area, to come in the urban city. Try to get something, work, some work to support their family inside their respective country. Women also suffer a lot in Africa due to the lack of uh, health hospital. So uh, when you look at uh, the number of women died due to lack of hospital. There are too many in Africa. At school also, a lot of women doesn't have chance to go to school for several reasons. Sometimes it's the cultural. Yeah. And in some culture, women are not allowed to go to school. In other culture, they put priority for women to work at home to support their mother. Another problem also in uh, several uh, African countries, women doesn't have any, le any legal form of identity because for the culture, you can't get ID without getting husband. Means uh, in some culture, women doesn't exist. Why an internet uh, provides uh, this opportunity for everybody to be part on this uh, ecosystem using this uh, digital technology. Now with digital technology, we have uh, seen a lot of progress uh, in uh, several countries in the activity of human, women. A lot of uh, women are working now in this uh, e-commerce. E they are developing a lot of applications on e-commerce. They are selling goods through the network. Also, several women wo working in the food system have developed a lot of application focus on their activity. And uh, with the development of this technology, the role of women become more and more important. And we have seen since the COVID, the, uh, an increased number of women in the digital sector. And I think now everybody agree, women is part of this digital ecosystem. When you look at the room, I think we have more women than men. 
it is a case also in the population. We have more women than men. But we have several challenges for that to access to this digital technology. Still, we have more men connected than women in the Africa. We have 45 men connected compared to 34 women. Access also on the tech work is very low for women. Generally, it's uh, around 12% compared to the world average 40%. Another issue also, it is a woman harassment online. In a lot of countries, the number is very high. And this number go to 10 to 40 percent of women in in on in internet have been arrested. Why is this? Uh, also, when you talk about this uh, African uh, population, we have uh, 500 million people in the continent without any legal identity and most of them are women. Why it is important today to discuss, despite progress made by several countries to involve women in the digital ecosystem, what future we want for women, what, future we, what role we want for women in this digital ecosystem. And we can uh, link this to this global digital compact, the role of women in this digital compact. Now first, let's start by key solution. We have uh, to provide access, equitable access to women and youth to this digital technology. How we can do? We have 34% uh, access to internet, less than 10% in the rural area. We have uh, to, to put the right infrastructure in the city and the urban, in the urban city as well as in the rural area. It is something very important. The government should do, put, in, put in place the right infrastructure to provide equitable and affordable access to the woman. This uh, can be do, done through several ways. We can have a, provide a lot of facility for women to, to access to this uh, service. Also, we can uh, develop public infrastructure to provide more access to women to, um, to this digital technology. Also, we need to build the capacity of women. It is very important. When we look at uh, the COVID period, in Africa, we identify around 5,000 innovation application, innovation focused on linkage to the COVID. And more of these applications have been developed by women. Means we need, we have a, a ground in the continent. We need to build their capacity. And uh, why uh, we should have a lot of uh, program to build, to, to build the capacity of women, not at the university or high school, but as the, as the primary school, like uh, what uh, Kenya already started last year. Second, a third, we, we provide access, build the capacity of the woman but we need also to involve the, the woman in the tech sector. It is very important. When you have the capacity, the government should do promote access to the woman, for women to this sector. And uh, through access to the market, through also support, funding support to this woman entrepreneur to access to this uh, market. It's something very important. It is something 
some country did uh, very successfully, like uh, Tunisia and Morocco. They have an incentive uh, fund to support uh, women tech in the sector. Another one, it is uh, we need uh, awareness about this uh, cyber security child online. It's not only child, but I think all women are concerned by this uh, cyber crime issue. We need to secure the, the cyberspace for women by organizing several uh, information working group awareness campaign to explain to the woman the opportunity and the risk to, for on the, for to be online. I think it is something very important we have to highlight uh, uh, for all women, such as uh, those in Africa. And uh, in the Global Digital Compact also, we have uh, highlighted the important role of women as gender cross-cutting issue in all the 10 key priority area. How to involve this woman uh, to be part on this global digital compact? One, on the digital public infrastructure. How this woman can access to the digital public infrastructure like uh, this plat e-commerce platform, e-government service, digital ID platform. And we, we have a lot of, we have some uh, recommendation for government. How government can have a, a, a affordable access to this uh, digital technology. This uh, goes through building infrastructure and also an appropriate regulation to make sure everybody have access to this uh, digital technology. We, of course, capacity building is very important through the Global Digital Compact and focus more on the emerging technology, how we build the capacity of, of women in the emerging technology to make sure women are, are, are part on this four industrial revolution. As you know, by 2030, 90% of the new job will be on digital and will need or need a digital component. We need also to build their capacity on this artificial intelligence. Because artificial intelligence is very easy, it's not, it's not require a lot of infrastructure. Just say, if you are smart, we need uh, some uh, application, some uh, infrastructure to develop application. And we have uh, seen also this development during this uh, COVID uh, pe period. What is important also uh, for women in this uh, global digital compact, it is uh, the issue of uh, public good. We need uh, to put in place infrastructure policy to provide opportunity of women to access to this uh, public goods. It is very, very important for the continent. Internet fragmentation. So important because we, when you talk about internet fragmentation, we, 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 we can talk about on one internet. But you go, you, you have Africa, several internet. You have uh, people who don't have access, people who don't have the technology, people who don't have the capacity. We need to avoid this internet frag fragmentation to make it uh, open <laughs> and, uh, ac and access to everybody. Yeah. Everybody should be, have equal right access to internet. Women and men should have equal right to access to internet. Something very important we have to take into consideration. And uh, also we have, uh, I we have uh, to consider uh, Access internet is a human right. If we consider access to internet is a human right, I think we can sort out the issue of access for women in the continent. And it is something we discussed uh, last year. Several progress have been made. We organized a lot of forum to discuss about this uh, key challenge. And we have noted several progress uh, uh, across uh, the continent to, to, to improve access women to this digital technology, to enhance also 
their productivity through using digital technology. And uh, I can highlight some initiative we have at the ECA level. Uh, we talk about this uh, capacity building. We have uh, one uh, program, call it African Connect Girl Coding Camp. Focus of women, on girl and woman, aged between 12 and 25 years old. This uh, program provides skills to this woman, to, to these people, uh, during a training for two weeks. The objective it is to show without any skills on digital technology, within two week uh, formation, uh, within two week training, we can get uh, enough skill to be part of this digital era. And the women are uh, trained in several areas like artificial intelligence, web, web, web gaming. Uh, we have also the turtle search. We have also several applications on, uh, on, on climate change, 3D printing, and other area. And since we launched this program, now we have uh, we launched this program in seven countries. And we have 35,000 girls trained, and they have developed around 300 projects. It is very amazing to, uh, to have a look on the project developed by this young girl. Just go to the application to, the, uh, to a climate change. Early mar marriage, it is something we have in Africa. People will get a uh, husband very, uh, very early and they are facing a lot of problems. And they develop a website to show the problem faced by this young girl. We have also as an application uh, related uh, to, the, uh, to, to, to the girl living uh, in the city, coming from uh, the rural area. And uh, they get a get lot of problems uh, uh, during this, uh, their staying in this uh, city. It is a people you meet uh, to work at home hmm, in several family, and they develop a lot of application on that. Also, on, yeah, on health sector, we have also several applications developed by this girl. Another project important, we call it Tech African Woman. Focus on the woman entrepreneurship. And we support women to improve their capacity to access to the market. It is an ECA program, and we already organized this. Uh, we, last year, we organized this in uh, four countries, and uh, several women has been, have been selected, and they get price and to improve their business through digital and technology. And the objective is by 2025 to have this program in all African uh, countries. Another important uh, project uh, for, for women it is a capacity building on fintech. It, when we look at uh, Kenya, Kenya is a good example where the fintech sector is leading by women. And we have uh, designed a program with Alibaba to build the capacity or to improve the capacity of women in the fintech uh, sector. It is something very important. I think uh, we can. Uh, say as example in several other countries to see how we can duplicate what's happened in Kenya in other African countries. This show the importance of uh, uh, this uh, uh, session. And I would like to congratulate uh, Barata and her team to have uh, this session, uh, in the second edition of the Women in IGF. Uh, and uh, to reassure the support of ECA of uh, this uh, on this activity because it is very important to support women why we are all coming from women without women you don't have anyone in this world and we need to support them to make them happy to make them involved in all sector and they come be they become leading this uh, for industrial revolution and I'm sure with the capacity we have now for the young generation, when you discuss with them, when you look at 
the project they develop, we are confident that Africa is on the right way to be part, such as a woman community in this four industrial revolution. I'm going to stop there and thank you very much for listening to me. Bye. Thank you very much, Magda. Uh, I would like to ask everyone to join us on the table because it looks very empty. But <laughs> on the other side, uh, yeah, if we can all just join up here to make the room a little bit warmer. Um, uh, thank you very much, Magda. I just want to thank you very much. Uh, when you started, you say that women are the one who educate children. Um, maybe I... I'm lost. Can we just join on the table as we walk in? Um, yeah, as you mentioned, women are the ones who educate children. And one other thing that you mentioned is that since COVID, there has been an increased number of women in the ICT sector. And I think it's one of the reality that the COVID has really given women an opportunity to work from home, participate on the internet in manner that we wouldn't before. Um, you mentioned that access is around 12% to women compared to men. Um, Africa has 500 million people in the continent, and in the next coming five years, 70% of those would be youth, which is one of those big things that really the continent has to battle with. But um, the highlight for me was um, that UNICA is focusing on building the capacity of women uh, to participate meaningful, meaningfully in the tech ecosystem. And you highlighted all the initiatives that uh, UNICA is doing, I won't repeat them, to make sure that women participate freely, safely, and equally on the internet. And they do participate on the e-commerce, which is like building technology and they're not just consumers. And thank you very much as we take that forward. I'm going to give uh, Ms. Margaret to uh, contribute at about to contrib to speak about women in IGF summit 2023 2022 a little bit and what we've done in 2023 and what she's been working on the research thank you thank you Baratang. Uh, can I kindly request for the presentation So thank you very much. Uh, my name is Margaret Nyambura Ndongo, working uh, at the Global Digital Inclusion Partnership, where we are doing a gendered analysis of issues of connectivity, usage, and related development outcomes in this digital ecosystem. And as uh, Dr. Makta has said, women have a central place in the development and adoption of the emerging technologies, and I think we can all attest to that. However, they are greatly missing in the tech spaces. We have seen the statistics. And we must ensure they are included at all levels if emerging technologies is to be responsible. To women's needs, wants, and more, we want to actively participate in this digital space, and we can only do that if what is there meets our needs. And probably to go deeper uh, on this uh, digital ecosystem that is much informed uh, or driven by the STEM area, that existing data reveals that globally there is a leaky pipeline leading to few women and lack of retention in STEM careers. That as we start at an early age, we probably have the same opportunities, men and women. But as we continue as young children, do we get the same opportunities? Are there cultural issues? Are there biases? Are there issues at the household level that keeps on pushing women to more arts and men to more STEM subjects? What can we do to ensure that from that particular age, from young age, we are having women focused on STEM subjects so that when we come to their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, we are not saying that we do not have women in the STEM area or in artificial intelligence or emerging technologies. And yet, and I think statistics have been given that uh, in the African context, most people are in the rural areas. And statistics have shown that 22% of primary schools in Africa have 
have only 22% have reliable internet connectivity. And we are talking about e-learning. We are talking about e-health. How do we ensure that our children that are in rural areas, they have the same opportunities as those who are in other places? So if connectivity is a start, then research shows that we are not where we need to be. We need to connect people in the rural areas. Majority of us in Africa, we are in rural areas, and that's where we don't have connectivity. Again, statistics show that meaningful connectivity is still a wild dream for most of the women in the global majority. And as GDIP, we are looking deeper and learning how we can address the inequality. And the research we are doing highlights the gaps, the cost of exclusions, and the urgency to change the cause. Because again, we don't want every year, every decade to be talking about lack of women in this space. And what do we mean by meaningful connectivity? And we start with the speed we want, at least 4G. And in this, then we are saying someone can be able to do something. You can be able to do your e-learning. You can be able to download your content. You can, not, you can not just be a user or a consumer of content, but you can also create. Again, we are talking of appropriate devices that if you have a smartphone, then you are probably able to do more than a basic phone. Again, we are talking of unlimited broadband connectivity that you can always get that connectivity whenever you want it and wherever you want it. And not only do you have the, that connectivity, but then you are able to use it on a daily basis. And it is due to that, then you can continuously keep on being innovative, keep on seeing how best to have a productive life in the digital space, and with that, you are able to improve your livelihood. So I know statistics have been given, but uh, using GSMA data of the 2023, we are seeing that women are 19% less likely than men to use mobile internet. And again, across the continent, all of us, we are using mobile internet. So you see, okay, uh, again, there's that gap. And 440 million women still do not own a mobile phone. That is a huge number. And again, as it has been said, uh, in our culture, at least in uh, the African context, women spend most of the time with their children. And these children are getting exposed to the digital technologies. How do these women then help them to navigate in the safety of this uh, digital space? So we must ensure that women are connected. They have these uh, smart devices to be able to be connected. And we are saying a total of 900 million women are still not used using mobile internet. They have basic phones. We really have to do that. And the opportunity cost for that is that uh, we are lo losing billions of money. And we need to do an analysis of that so that even as we are talking about inequalities in the digital space, then we are able to quantify that. So uh, meaningful connectivity of women in the global majority is a prerequisite for them to assume a central role as skilled citizens and active participants in the digital economy. That emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, uh, machine le uh, learning, and internet of things are the engines of the future economies. And we must be in that space as creators, not as consumers. And our social economic lives are still and will continue depending on these emerging technologies. Uh, how do we position uh, women in this digital economy? The development outcome of digital execution can only be addressed if we can quantify the opportunity cost of digital inclusion. That every time try to see what are women losing if they are not connected. Uh, and not just in terms of monetary value, in terms of shaping our future generation uh, so that we contextualize that. And the aim of, uh, is to contextualize the digital exclusion narrative and link it to livelihoods and socioeconomic development. That in the digital ecosystem, there is uh, something for everybody. Everybody can make a niche of themselves, but you need to be aware, you need to have the skills for you to be able to do that. And data on women's experiences of digital economy and cost of inclusion is vital to reflect women's worldviews in artificial intelligence decision making based on gender data in public domain. That we are going to the world of artificial intelligence. Do we have enough data about women uh, and them presenting that data? Ha has it been collected? And if we don't do that, then we end up with biased decisions, uh, outcomes, which can lead to diverse development outcomes. Artificial intelligence currently replicates biases and discrimination in decision-making algorithms due to lack of data on women's and 
global health. So inequalities perpetuate when artificial intelligence are used to make decisions on allocation of resources. So again, this is an area that we need women to actively participate. So contextualization of the opportunities for women in the digital space, once meaningfully connected and digitally skilled, will lead to digitally innovative livelihoods. And we have seen that, that as long as you give people the tools they need to navigate, then they are able to make their own livelihoods. And the ripple effect of empowering women through digital inclusion, skills development, and cyber hygiene, which again we must emphasize, to ensure that again we are bringing holy human beings, the young generation, we should not let them be influenced by these new technologies. They must use it to develop their socioeconomic, to shape their lives, and again, still not forget our culture so that we are moving with our culture uh, in a safely uh, environment, digital environment. And ultimately, giving meaning to artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and other emerging technologies in the eyes of the women in the global majority. That as long as these technologies are making sense to us, as long as they can make us change our livelihoods, as long as we can see a change, a positive change, uh, after the usage of these technologies, then we can move forward and we can actively participate in shaping the future of the emerging technologies. If you're not thinking about holistic inclusion, that is from early childhood, from what they can do with these technologies, from the very beginning, meaningful integration and active participation of women in emerging technologies will remain a mirage, and we risk excluding them from the many opportunities in the digital space. So again, we need to start from early childhood, try to see what are the opportunities, how can we be safe in the digital space, and as we move uh, that way, then everybody have a space in the digital ecosystem. Thank you, and back to you, Baratang. Thank you, Margaret. That was a brilliant presentation, in fact. Thanks for covering all the elements of internet governance and um, AI, which is the theme of this um, meeting. Um, if 70% of Africa is going to be youth in the next coming five years, I think it's just fair that a youth member of Africa speak on behalf of African issues. And I would like to give the opportunity to Lily to speak. Right. Hi, everyone. And to our audience who are online, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you are joining from. So um, if there was a reason why I'm in this session, I think I found the why. And for everyone here, I'm hoping that you found just something that helps us to see the reason why women participation at the IGF and women engagement generally in technology and in the STEM space is important. My why this morning is the issue of opportunity cost of when women are not included. That is huge. I've always been seeing that we add more to it that is more um, in, um, inclusiveness, more equitability, and then just the, the, uh, the essence of bringing to the forefront issues that affect women the most to the IGF. But I'm seeing that there's actually a glaring evidence of things that don't happen when women aren't present. Who can speak as women do? Who can talk about things that affect women from where it affects us the most? And if we're looking for diversity in perspective and what we can bring to the table to make the IGF as a knowledge um, sharing platform, place where recommendations are made, then every one of us has to be present. And that is my why for today. And that is the reason why I'm excited that the presentation that have gone before have mentioned that. So for me, that sets or where the cup as both a youth and as a woman, I'm seeing that, um, and also as an African, for people who are essentially growing to become next leaders um, in the space, I see that um, for, for us, this is really the, the, the platform for us to also amplify the voices of work we've been doing as young people. And just like we've said about the Global Digital Compact, um, especially with the focus on capacity building on the African continent, I just want to highlight some of the things you're doing for the youth IGFs that have focused on, um, I mean, a broad variety of issues, but essentially to make sure that we are not leaving anyone behind. Behind. By dint of the fact that there is the diverse, diversity in even um, knowledge sharing in local languages, also expertise where um, we bring people from areas where there are issues that are happening that can give grassroots ideas 
to the platforms to contribute and to say what it is that they demand. All of those are things that uh, looking at the future or projecting will be important for us to make sure that we are building solutions that do not just assume that there's a need, but we know what the real need is and hear from the people that are affected by them. So for us as women and for, us, for me as also a youth, it is the reason why some of the work we've done on the African continent is very important, that we get to the grassroots, know what the issues are, and able to bring it to the forefront for authorities to see what it is that we feel and to demand it. So and it's, it's what I'll add on this session, and I'm also going to drag another youth into this conversation, but I know Barak Tan will call her soon. So thank you. Um, thank you very much, Lily. I just want to add one last element to this session. Yesterday, I attended a session where we held feminist principles for including gender in the global digital compact. I think that's a very, um, the copy is here for those who couldn't make it yesterday. I would like to read these eight principles. They're very important because this is the outcome of the work done by APC, the UN Women and their partners, which is World Wide Web Equality Now. And we all organizations that are focusing on gender equality came yesterday together and to endorse these principles. Those who want to still participate, there's a sign in support. If you Google it, um, you can go in and support these principles. In fact, there's 10 of them. And I think these are principles that organizations that work with participation of women online and the safety in, in the global um, to be, uh, space to be included in the global digital compact. They were called the feminist global digital compact principles. So if you want to look at them, please go look at them. I'll just browse through them. And the first one is ensure concrete commitments to protect the digital rights of women and girls and marginalized groups. The second one, guarantee freedom from technology, facilitate, facilitated gender-based violence. The third one, prom promote universal rights to freedom of expression, privacy, peaceful assembly, and participation of women and girls in their diversity in all aspects of life. Ensure universal affordability accessible and safe internet access for all. F fifth, demand strict action against harmful surveillance application and high-risk AI system. Six, expand women's participation and leadership in the technology sector and digital policy making. The seventh one is prioritize strategies that reduce the environmental impact of new technologies. Eighth, implement measures for states and transnational cooperation to ensure data privacy governance and consent. Nine, adopt equality by design principles and a human right based approach throughout all phases of digital technology de uh, development. As a software engineer and a coder in my life, this was one of the principles I thought it's critical to be included at the moment because 90% of the time women are consumers. If we don't include them in the design phase, if we don't get them to speak when the product is still at the initial stage, we're going to miss their voice from the onset. So I, I felt this was one of the highlights for me to make sure that a human right based approach and equality by design principle is included. Transparency and human rights and gender rights impact assessments and incorporates into, into the development of any algorithmic, algorithmic decision making systems or digital technologies prior to de deployment and are not tested without these principles to prevent discrimination and harmful biases being amplified and perpetuated. The last one is set AI safeguard and standards to prevent discriminatory biases. In closing of this session, I would like to ask if there's anyone who has comments or questions for the speakers. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for this amazing discussion but also uh, looking at the contribution that have been shared uh, in the room in regards to women in IGF. Uh, I have two reflections as far as the participation of women and girls is concerned on the matters of digital economy. And I'll speak on the context of Africa, but also, I was also actually wondering why we do not have a representation from the global majority, 
does it mean that the women in global majority are more advanced when it comes to issues of technology? Or do we think there is need for us to have a shared equilibrium so that we're also able to learn? This is just a reflection from the panel presentation. Uh, this is what I want to say that I think for me, um, looking at the contribution but also the progress of women in tech, of course there is a lot of biases, challenges and barriers that women face, but when it comes to documentation of st uh, statistics and reports, we majorly focus on the women and girls in the urban areas when you're looking at the content of connectivity, the content of access, affordability, and issues of safety. And for me, uh, part of the learning from the yesterday's presentation on the feminist principles in the included in the uh, GDC is how can we be able to also re reach those who have not been reached when it comes to issues of digital connectivity? How can we be able to look at um, getting access to the rural communities, working with young women and young people in the informal settlement so that we do not assume that the fact that there is a discussion on internet connectivity and digital governance, we also ensure that we are reaching them as early as now so that we do not wait when we've made a lot of progress for us to remember that there is someone we've not reached. That is one. Two, uh, we cannot speak about a digital connectivity without the question of electricity. What happens to the region that for them, electricity, it's like a prophecy yet to be fulfilled. What are we doing about that as we push for the global digital compact? What is, how are we work collaborating with countries and member states to ensure that electricity does not become a question that we are still seeking answers to? Uh, another thing is, I think we have had change and stories of progress for women in tech and specifically for Africa. But where are the success stories that we are able to document and showcase? I've heard about the innovations that have been made. How are we able to document the milestones we have made so far to inform the learning and inspiration to those young women who may want to get into the tech space? but also to be motivated that there is something that we can do and we can progress with. There is the fear that AI is going to take away the jobs of young people and young women in Africa. How can we be able to remove the stereotype around artificial intelligence and the connection of employment opportunities for the very many young Africans who are struggling with the struggle of employment. I think those are some of the discussion we need to start having as early as now. And my last reflection is, from the presentation we've had is, how is internet governance, how is global digital compact going to benefit women and young people? And this is a mistake that probably um, some legal frameworks at the global level have done that we may not want to repeat, looking at women as beneficiaries of frameworks being developed at the global level and not as stakeholders, influencers, and key decision makers. The moment we take women as beneficiaries to this process, that is the beginning of failure because we will miss their input, we will miss their shaping of ideas, and we'll also miss uh, um, the, um, the ideology that they will have to contribute to this process. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the issue of electricity is a very big one. I'm from South Africa. Every two, two hours, electricity is shut down. Like, what is that? It's it's just such dis empowering exercise. For me, electricity and internet are like this. Um, any other comment? 
there is a concern in the room that we haven't had any global south voice. North, if we can have one comment, is it? Yeah. Good morning. I'm going to try to, to speak in English. My number, my name is uh, Marta Lucia Micher Camarena from Mexico. I'm a senator in Mexico from uh, Guanajuato, so one our states. Well, I'm very glad to be here. I will try to say, to talk about our country in, in America Latina, Latin American. Well, we have the, see, we only, we, I only, bueno, I'm very glad to be here and to, to hear the problems you have as the same as we have in, in Mexico. In Mexico, um, we are about 120 millions of, uh, in Mexico. And uh, we have the, the, the same gap that you have. We have discrimination. We are not the first uh, population that uh, can talk about um, internet. We have very, very uh, um, deep problems with uh, the access at this uh, type, uh, kind of services. I, I, I want to tell you that in Mexico, 78 talk, um, one percent of the total of women in our country, and uh, we we don't we don't we have the problems to use internet and um, to access uh, to the ticks that you mentioned. We have that problem, uh, and, and it, the problem is the the age you have. If you have my age, you have problems with the internet. But I see that uh, our youth, it's, they, they have no problems to take this, to, to use the, this kind of services. But my, my worry is that, that we are very atrás, behind men in these issues. We have to empowerment women, we have to, to make them to use this kind of, uh, of um, herramientas, tools, to, to govern, to, to access not only at internet, to access to the right to be informed, and to the right to be in the ticks, and to, to the right to be in the devol development, because we have this problem now. We, can, we have to know about this, but, but uh, our countries are not interested in, uh, in, in this kind of issue. So, I'm glad that you are discussing the, this, this issue because in Mexico we are worried about this because only the youth people and women are in these issues. But uh, I, don't, I don't know, about 50 years uh, old, they don't know this kind of uh, tools. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. If we can just get one minute, well, half a minute, 30 seconds, closing from all the speakers. Thank you, Maratang. Uh, probably just to comment on uh, her comment <laughs> that um, I think we have to be innovative in this space so that we can include even those who are in the rural areas. And for me, I look at uh, the use of art, um, drama, so that the youth that we have said, they make a majority of the African population and uh, we can use them to go back to their villages. They have access to the technologies, but every person must they have their roots. And if we do that, then we are able to create awareness, we are able to educate women and the other young people in the village using various innovative technologies so that they use digital space as a tool to move to where they need to be. And if we do the, that, then we are able, even as we solve the issues of connectivity in the rural areas, then we are using other ways to ensure that these people are getting the right information. Thank you, and we thank all of you for coming. Thank you. Let me focus on the issue of uh, electricity. If you look at the statistic, there is no way 
for African people to get access to oil. When we, ha we have uh, around the world 737 million, uh, 700 million 33 people without access to electricity in the world. In Africa, you have 600 million. Means 53% of the population doesn't have access to electricity. And, when, and there is a lot of disparity in this uh, country. Look at when you go South Sudan, 7.7% only of the population has access to electricity. With that, how we can expand this digital access to oil? So we, we, <laughs> we, we need uh, <laughs> to use uh, as a source of uh, technology. It is, they are, we, have, we have it. She highlights some. We can use uh, some technology. But this technology doesn't cost some lot of lot of uh, energy. Also, we have uh, the infrastructure. We don't use efficiency the infrastructure in the continent. Yeah, we have to leave. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we can discuss in bilateral on the issue of that. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming here. And in closing, I would like to quote what Dr. Sect had said, which is, women are the ones who educate children. The meaning of that is women are the ones who educate the future, because children are the future. And if the future is educated by people who don't have opportunities and are illiterate in terms of technology, then we are building a wrong future. Hence, we need to, what are, Lily said, what are the costs of not having women empowered. The cost is we will be talking about the same thing in the next coming 50 years if we do not give women opportunity. If we don't change this dynamic of understanding that women are educating the future, we won't change. So for me, it's, this is not an African issue. This is not a Mexican issue. This is a global issue. If Africa is not empowered, if Mexico is not empowered, if Okay, Japan is a different story. If we're not empowered, then nobody's empowered because future, a, technology and AI doesn't care about where you live. You can do anything you want on the internet. You can harass anyone from anywhere, any woman from anywhere, and we need to get that stopped. Now, there are two things that I wanted to highlight. One was that education. The second one that came from you as a speaker is to say, how do we take women in IGF and make it a global issue, not just an African issue. Now, it was formed, I started this with in the African IGF and focusing on women in Africa. So obviously the legacy came to the IGF in Japan, the speakers are also from Africa, and now we need to grow it. And I hope that next year we'll get speakers from across the world and it will be about global issues and not just issues that are reflective of Africa. And I would like to encourage everyone to really look at the feminist principles for including gender in the GDC. This was discussed yesterday by all organizations that are focusing on gender issues and I, we've endorsed it. I'm hoping that people are going to join. There's a sign in on support of this principle online. So you should, you should just Google feminist principles for including gender in the GDC. So personally, as Girl Hype and as Baratang, I have signed on that document to say I support these principles. And these are a reflective of so many organizations coming together and putting this thanks to Equality Now, APC, World Wide Web, UN Women, and all those who played part, and UNFPA, UNFPA for literally bringing us all together to come up with this document. So I'm endorsing this document as part of women in IGF. We are saying this is something that we really endorse to take to the GDC. Thank you very much to everyone for coming. Bye.